Hello, everyone, and welcome to Get More Clients. I'm your host, Lynn Whitbeck. Business owners and entrepreneurs hire me to ignite winning sales because most are chasing down leads, lack client retention, conversion, and profit. The mission of this show is to educate, inspire, and motivate women around the world to build a robust sales strategy to get more clients because most can't get more clients and haven't a clue why. You will learn to transform thinking to the client's perspective, eliminate the lengthy chaotic sales cycle to ignite your sales and unleash lasting profits. You will also have the opportunity to connect with me further to see how I can support you beyond today. Last week, we discussed the remarkable truths when things go wrong with your clients. Today, we will be discussing using inspiring value statements to generate quality leads and sales. We will be pulling together the previous episodes and exercise to plan your communication strategy. And this starts with thinking like the client. By the end of today's show, you will know how to use the client's perspective to frame your communication around so they can. Incorporate the associated motivations and emotional triggers in your outreach. Put it all together to create your value proposition and value statements. The work you have already completed as you have actively, actively participated in each and every episode delivers an exceptionally strong foundation. Let's start with a value proposition. A value proposition is a promise of value to be delivered. It is the so they can, clearly and beautifully packaged. Your value proposition explains how and why you are different and better in the marketplace. How your product or service solves problems or improves situations. What specific benefits clients can expect. Your value proposition reinforces your competitive advantage. It articulates the primary reason a prospect should buy from you and not from your competitor. Based on your client why, you create your value proposition as a cost versus benefit equation that taps into your prospect's motivation. So what do I mean by that? <laughs> okay, so first of all, motivation. It equals the perceived benefits. That's the so they can. So they can what? Plus, so motivation equals the perceived benefits plus emotions minus the perceived costs. So when you're working this out, the elements of your value proposition, the key part is a headline. That's the so they can. The, the benefits them buy, right? So, so they can, you know, get more clients. So they can create more impact and grow their business, right? So there you want to put that so they can plus the benefits that they receive. Now, a sub headline or paragraph in your value statement is we provide or value proposition is we equals we provide plus that benefits them by. So in other words, you know, we provide group membership programs that provide the education, training, and support that they need to get more clients. So that's just one idea. Now you need to work this out because a good value proposition can be read and understood in five seconds. All right. So really quick and easy. And it's really important. So I want to explain it in another way. Your value proposition explains what you provide that benefits them by so they can. So this is what I've been talking about 
all the way through from client thinking, right? So what does your client, your prospect, what do they want, need, or lack, right? Why does it matter to them? Um, what problem does it solve? What area of concern? Uh, uh, what's in it for them? So they can. So they can what? And this is what you need to drop into your entire value proposition. Now I want to tell you something else. What a value proposition is not. Number one, it's not a slogan. A slogan or a tagline is a short, catchy phrase of three to five words, and it goes alongside your brand name or logo. Think of Nike's, just do it. Three words. All right. And number two, a value proposition is not a positioning statement. A positioning statement is a description of your product and target audience and explain, explains how it fills the market need or a market need, okay? So that's a positioning statement. Number three, your value proposition is not a unique selling proposition. Now, these two are often mixed up. Um, and I want to talk about this a little bit because more commonly referred to as a USP, a unique selling proposition is the one thing that makes your business better than the competition. It's a specific benefit that makes your business stand out when compared to other businesses in your market. Now, it can be more than one thing, but normally a USP it's really, it situates a business in relation to its competitors. And the value proposition focuses more on how customers' lives will be improved by working with the business. So you sort of see the difference there? The USP is how this fits in with your competitors. And your value proposition is about how your clients' lives are going to be improved when they work with you. Essentially, a value proposition is a promise of value to be delivered. So let's sort of bring this all together so that you can really capture this. And we'll go over some examples. And for many of you, whether you work in the corporate world, a small business, or you're a solo entrepreneur, you may, very be, you may be very familiar with a tool called Slack. So Slack has a few variations on its value proposition statement, but they all focus on ease of use, enhanced productivity, and pleasantness. So this is their value proposition. Slack makes it downright pleasant to work together. All right, so there's one example. Now I've got a second example for you. And many of you have heard of this or you may use it. You've see, certainly seen their ads on YouTube because there's no confusion about what services Grammarly provides in their pro value proposition. Compo I'm gonna read this. Compose bold, clear, mistake-free writing with Grammarly's AI-powered writing assistant. I mean, no confusion about what it does, right? And how it's going to benefit me, right? I'm going to have bold, clear, mistake-free writing. Wow. I mean, who doesn't want that? So the value statement is different. So there's a value proposition, which we just went over, and I gave you those brilliant examples. <laughs> and now we're going to talk about a value statement, a value statement is different from a value proposition where the value proposition is an umbrella. Think of it as an umbrella, an umbrella over our head. A value statement is everything about or under the umbrella. So it's about a specific detail or a new nuanced benefit. So in other words, a value statement is an effective sales tactic to capitalize on your value proposition with laser focus. 
and you create value statements using the formula I've adapted from Anthony Perinello. And if you don't know who he is, he's been in sales a long time. He's written a lot of great books. And this is adapted from the headline in uh, the in headline your letter, headline your letter in his book, Selling to Vito, um, which is very important top officer. Now he wrote this book in 1994. And I want to tell you, it's still a great read. And while some of the things you're not going to use anymore, there's tremendous value. And I, I just like that book a lot. And I incorporated that technique of the headline, your letter, the headline, your letter. And I use it in my own strategic sales plans based on my experience of, of reporting and working with the C-suite. The key for creating your value statement is to do the research and gather your data that enables you to answer your client's why with a balanced equation. So I'm gonna walk you through this because a value statement is a weighted benefit of your product or service that's laser focused on the so I can of your client why, and it balances a compelling benefit with an explanation of why there is no associated risk to the benefit. Value statements should be included at the top of your articles. They can be at the beginning of a video or a presentation caption. You can use them on the top of fold of your website. They can be in a shareable image. They can be positioned above a call to action. Now, often when we're creating content and working with private clients, we're actually using value statements in multiple places because it's really capturing in a very brief way encapsulating this value statement. So let's talk about the anatomy of a value statement because these are so important. They should be 30 words or less, okay? 30 words or less. They need to include numbers or percentages. You balance the equation. So this is what I mean by this. If you're able to increase revenues, you must explain that there's not a risk of increasing expenses because normally those things will go hand in hand. So that's one example. A second example of a balanced equation is that if you can lower expenses, it's not at the risk of reducing quality, reliability, or client services. So, because when you hear that people are lowering your prices, I mean, and this happens, have you ever been to the grocery store and, and all of a sudden that carton of ice cream has gone from a full 16 ounces of ice cream for six bucks? And at this point in time, who knows what the price is changing to, that it's now 12 ounces for six bucks. They actually decrease the size of that ice cream. And so it looks like the price is the same, but you're actually getting a smaller package and you're getting a smaller amount, right? And so when you're using that, uh, it's really important when you're talking to your clients that they understand if you are proposing something that's going to lower their expenses, that you're, they're not going to be reducing their quality, um, the reliability, or their client uh, experience. All right, so what else? What else is in the anatomy of a value statement? You want to avoid industry jargon, buzzwords, techno babble, or any words or phrases that your prospect may be unfamiliar with. And I can tell you from my experience, when I was in commercial printing, we had all kinds of, of jargon and words and people won't know what that means. All right. Even though to us inside a printing facility, a manufacturing facility, we knew what they meant. It didn't mean our clients knew what they meant. All right. You all are in that same situation. All right. So what's another core piece of the anatomy of a value proposition? It needs, it must address your clients so I can, so I can what, all right? It has to answer that. It needs to establish your credibility. This is a point of proof, right? 
it should reference a specific time frame. And it's based on a literal quotation or verifiable factual information from a credible source. All right, this is really important uh, because as you're selling to different personality types, you need to have verifiable factual information from a credible source. Just saying some dude on YouTube or on TikTok said this, yeah, that is not factual. It's not verifiable. And it's not a credible source. All right. So those are critical factors in the anatomy of your value statement. So I want to give you some examples of a value statement so you can sort of get into what I mean as I'm going through all this. We streamlined and automated the procurement process with an average cost savings of 15% while elevating brand integrity and improving quality control. All right, so this is a value statement. It's really well balanced because we're talking about streamlining and automating procurement, right? So you think, okay, we streamline and automate that, but how is that impacting what we're doing as an organization? And so, you know, and we've got that number by 15%, a cost savings of 15% while while, while elevating brand integrity and improving quality control. So those are some of the negatives that could come out of it. So actually we made them better. So that's that example of a balanced statement. It includes that percentage um, and it gives you that, that addressing the shadow side. What is the shadow side of that thing they want? Because they want cost savings. They want to have a streamlined and automated process. Right. And so when you look at that, then it's the other flip side. What's the shadow side to that? Nope. Nope. We also happen to increase our brand integrity and improve quality control. All right. So let's do a second one and let's walk through this for you. Improve employee health, increase morale, and reduce absenteeism while reducing your spend by an average of over 50% on soft tissue costs with on-site pain relief treatment. Okay, so this is another example. And so what it's doing is, once again, what do you want? You want better employee health, you want better, happier team members, you want to have people not calling in sick, you want them to be on the job. So you're going, oh wow, this is incredible. But how much is this gonna cost me, right? Because you actually average us, you're reducing your spend. You're reducing your spend by an average of over 50%. So that's that 50% of uh, that number, that magic number on soft tissue costs, which is very specific. This is how we're doing it. We're doing it. And then you know the, it's on the what and now the how, because we're providing on-site pain relief treatment. So that, those are two great examples of a balanced value statement. And you can see how you can use that. You can use that in your marketing copy. You can use that in your sales copy. It can be part of a presentation. It can be on your website. It can be part of a social media graphic. And these are very powerful. Using value statements in your communication helps shorten the sales cycle. Many decision makers will not move forward without proven benefits and success story. And a value proposition can deliver that succinctly at a glance in 30 words or less. And the data, facts, and figures serve as another important purpose because they're expanding your business within an organization, with, within an organization and protecting your existing business. So I want to talk about that. You can actually use value statements to help you retain clients. Wow. Mind blown. You can use these to help retain clients. And this is so critical because there are times that your clients are going through a budget allocation, or they're actually maybe cutting back on budgets. And you can actually use value statements in a single sentence, 30 words or less, to explain why your product or service needs to stay on or in the budget, right? 
So they are a terrific way to also expand your business because you can use these same value statements, especially when you're working with an organization that has multiple departments or even multiple divisions, because you can use a value statement from one department or one division to showcase how you're gonna be able to perform and work for this next division, this next department. So you can expand your business with an existing client. So you can use value statements as also as an introduction, um, as I said, to your future prospects and clients. They are a great way to really showcase what you do and how you do it. And I really wanna make sure you did pick up on that point that I made of how you can use them to, for account penetration with existing clients, especially when you're in that B2B world and you're selling to an organization that has multiple departments that your product or service is a great fit for, or multiple plants or divisions or, or locations. All right. And you know, what's even better, it's pretty exciting. You can also use this in your referral process. This is a terrific tool in your referral process. So not only can you present this to your existing clients, about who they may know in their world who could benefit from your product or service, but it's a succinct way of reminding them of those benefits that they themselves have received by using their facts and figures, their data of what you provided to them in that value statement. But then you are able to use that when you're introduced to that wonderful new referral. And that referral came from Bob and you can showcase what and how you perform for Bob. So that is a great way that you can use them in your referral process as well. Value statements are something that truly can set you apart as you're organizing both how you put yourself out in the world and how you present your, yourself and your organization, but in all your marketing and sales communications. And they are a brilliant shortcut so that you can truly capture people's imagination capture their attention so that they can really clearly understand what you do, why it benefits them, so they can. And by the way, there is no shadow side. It's all good. All right. So value statements should, honestly, they should be used in every sales and marketing material. And my recommendation is to conclude them in every planned sales communication. And as I mentioned, the key is to do the research and gather your data, enabling you to answer the client's why with a balanced equation. So I've already anticipated your objection. So let's go there for a minute. I don't have no stinking data. <laughs> I've just started. I'm just getting started. I don't have that type of information to know how uh, I've benefited clients because I'm just open, put up my, put my website up and put my shingle out there. So there is always data that's available in your product or service area. And there's a lots of time, great data that is available through university studies or other B2B business studies. And as an example, I actually just went through this for a client that we were putting and did the research for them because their new product, they had a new product that they were gonna be delivering, new service. And they themselves didn't have the data that they needed to on, on the results, but there is data out there through university studies that we could use in the value statements about the benefits the so they can. So it absolutely is available. Now, you don't want to steal data that's from like another another competitor about what they can achieve. So you really want to be looking at things that you can use to showcase, you know, proven uh, examples. Once again, remember, you've got to be able to back it up. Is it a factual? Is it verifiable? And is it from a credible source? All right. Those are critical factors. 
But there are so many great studies that are done by the amazing universities all over the world that you can pull that information in and you can use it to your benefit to create your value statement. That's even when you're starting out brand new. Yes, you can. You can do this. And there are resources available for you to pull that in. And if nothing else, and you're not sure even where to start, your local library is the perfect place to go. The librarians are happy and ready to help you. And they can, sometimes, I am not kidding you, they'll even help you. They'll do some research for you and send it to you. I mean, how brilliant is that? Leverage those free resources that you already have access to in your community. Uh, and they can help point you in the right direction so that you can get those couple of key data points. It's always great to verify them in multiple sources, and then you can use them. And I often use, as you notice, I use facts and figures all the time, every week. I make sure that they're verifiable, they're factual, and they're from a reliable source. All right. And that way, if I'm up on stage, I'm live and in person, I've actually had this happen. Someone asked me where I got that information. I can tell them where I got that information. Well, this was a study that was done in 2021 by Harvard University. <laughs> I mean, wham, bam, there's your answer. So go ahead and do that because you do. There's always a couple of people that are just, I, either curious, they, they want to know, or they could also be the hecklers in the audience, but either way, verifiable, factual, trusted source, okay? Credible source. Okay, this has been so much fun today. Thank you so much for tuning in. My purpose is for you to get more clients. Bottom line, don't make this harder than it has to be. Sales should be a win-win. On behalf of the Win-Win Women Network, I have carved out a limited number of time slots to invite you to hop on an Ignite Your Sales call with me to see what's working, not working, and what you would love to have working. I'm going to see how I might further support you and effectively generating more leads, converting more sales, and fulfilling on your promise as a brand and organization. The fastest way to success is to assure people know that they matter. And the best way to make this happen is to build a consistent sales strategy to acquire, convert, and capitalize on every lead. You will find growing your business is easy and lucrative. Today, we looked at using inspiring value statements to generate quality leads and sales. The key is for you to implement these steps to stop wasting time, energy, and resources. You have the opportunity to jump in and get the support you need for true success. Say yes to you and get on a call with me. I am truly gifted at this and you deserve the shortcut to your success with the right support. You can go to p2q.link win win. p2q.link forward slash win win. It's in the show notes. You can also connect with me on our website and to stay current with all of our insightful advice, our breakthrough advantages, and never miss an episode of Get More Clients. You can sign up for our weekly wisdoms newsletter at petitetoqueen.com. You will get lots of bonuses and perks, let me tell you. And let's move to next week on Get More Clients. You will learn how to create a delightful client experience journey with process mapping and apply that in all of your communication. So we're still on communication. We're going to be talking about how this works with communication, that client experience and creating that process for your communication plan. All right. I will see you next week on Get More Clients.